Hey, what's up everyone? It's Anderson over at Coda CrossFit Native here to, uh, with the coach's notes for Thursday, okay? Um, Thursday, we have two parts. We have an Olympic lifting um, session to start it off with, and then we're gonna finish it out with some nice long uh, pacing work. Um, so for this part A, you have one snatch high pull, right? A snatch pull, you just kind of give that little shrug, but a snatch high pull, you hit the hip, and you really try to get it at least above your belly button. Um, okay, and then you're gonna go, so you'll do the one snatch high pull, one power snatch, and then you put the barbell down and you go into three box jumps, okay? So what my recommendation for the box jumps would be is this is all about being explosive, right? We're trying to teach them to be super fast and super powerful. So. For the box jumps, I always tell my class, I want you to put out a 16 or a 20 inch box, something that you is lower than you normally use, and I want you to be so explosive that you almost land straight legged on top of that box, and I shouldn't be able to hear your feet. If you give them those commands, it really makes them jump, open those hips, and try to land nice and soft, and they don't land in that squat position. Landing in that squat position isn't explosive. That's just kind of getting the work done. So open, making them open the hip and land with soft feet on top, that's, that's a really good um, cue that I've used uh, to get people to be explosive. And once they start, you know, they can start off on a 16 inch box. Even your elite people can do that. Okay, then they can kind of build throughout the sets. That's perfectly fine. Um, then um, I would, something else to reiterate is the snatch high pull. You kind of want them to use this to tell them what they're doing wrong, right? So if they hit that snatch high pull and they feel themselves falling forward, you know, they can almost self-correct right before they reset and hit the power snatch, right? I would have them drop in between reps. Um, if they miss their hip, they can focus in, okay, I got to hit my hip on this power snatch to get it up there. If you have those competitors um, that really want to work on barbell cycling, you can definitely put those together. Um, and not one dot one it, but I think the majority of us need to use that high pull to see where our lift is falling apart. And as coaches, that's a great tool for us to be able to spot it before they hit that power snatch. They don't have to go right into it. Like stop them after the snatch high pull if you can see the confusion on their face, tell them what they did, and then say, hit your power snatch. Like hit that hip pocket, really explode. So I would do that. Okay, and then part B is a long pacing workout. Okay, it's an 18 minute soft cap. So 18 minutes would be is if you can get each of these done in two and a half minutes because you have the 30 seconds of built-in rest, right? Three, six, nine times two, that's 18. That's gonna be really tough for a lot of people to stay in a pacing workout, keeping that heart rate down. So that's gonna be for your really elite people. Um, especially if you need to keep it to 18 minutes to keep your classes on time and you don't have that extra wiggle room because um, of how you planned your classes. So I would definitely tell them that um, to kind of scale that back accordingly. In your warm up, use the rower, have them row for a minute or, or I guess you could do a minute and a half, but I would have them row for a minute, see how far they get and how they're feeling because they need it. The whole point is pacing, so we don't want them to come out hot just to hit it in two and a half minutes. You want them to keep their heart rate under control or else, you know, what's, what's the point of this workout? Just trying to hold on. So you've got an 800 for the guys, 600 for the girls, 100 double unders, and then a round of a 530. So that's going to be pretty challenging. Tell them to scale that back to a 400 or a 200 on the run, maybe a 600, 400 on the row, something, something that they know that they could hit for two rounds. Um, and that is a soft cap. So if you have a little bit of extra wiggle room or you know there's not a class coming after that, go ahead, let them finish. That's, that's completely up to you. Um, so how I would structure today is we have 28 minutes of actually working out and doing stuff. Um, so we have 32 minutes of warming them up and coaching. I would only spend probably 10, maybe 12 minutes on a general warm up using the rower, having them go for a run, maybe doing some calf work, um, just to get them prepared for the workout and get their heart rate going. And then I would spend 20 minutes, all of it, with this snatch. We've been in quarantine for a long time. So um, I know a lot of people haven't been working snatch and even when they do, um, they can't always pick out their, uh, their flaws. So. 
I'm, I'm going to use PVC pipe to definitely open up the shoulders, drill the technique, keeping those elbows nice and high so it keeps the bar close to you and you're not reverse curling it or anything like that. Um, I may even use some dumbbells to get some high pulls so they can kind of feel what it's like to keep something close to them. And then some strict press, prepping that shoulder, and then even maybe some overhead waiter's walks just to prime the core and all of that. Um, yeah, so in, in, in that 20 minute specific warm up, I, I, would, I would think most classes need all of that. And, um, but if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me, Bryce, Natalie, doesn't really matter. All right, have fun with it.